Good evening, Bante and all Taliana Mita City Hontu Aliana, and welcome to Suta Discussion Day 95 by Bante Dr. Gango Dawila Chadima. This is the first class of Patama Sama Jiwi Suta with topic the introduction. Patama Sama Jiwi Suta is the eighth Suta from the total of 10 Suta that have been chosen by Bante Chadima for this Suta discussion. In previous classes, Bante have discussed about Mangala Sutta, Ratana Sutta, Meta Sutta, Sigalowada Sutta, Dhamma Chakapawatana Sutta, Sabasawa Sutta, and Patakama Sutta, which Bante has elaborated those Sutta in depth. For those who have missed our previous classes, please check on T. Ratana Wihara Aman Padana's plan Facebook page and YouTube channel. We have uploaded the previous 94 classes there. We are always welcoming newcomers, therefore, whoever that wish to join us via Zoom, where we can engage directly with Bante, can contact us on Tiratana Wihara Amal Perdana Klang's Facebook Messenger or register through the QR code that's shared in the, our recent flyer regarding the Suta discussion class on our Facebook account or can even contact the Wihara directly through WhatsApp. Our speaker, Bante Dr. Gango Dawila Chandima, is the associate editor of the Journal of International Buddhist Studies, or JIBS, which is published by the Buddhist Research Institute of Mahachula Longkorn Raja Vidyalaya University in Thailand. He was previously a research fellow at the Center for Studies in Religion and Society, or TSRS, at University of Victoria, Canada. Bante Dr. Chandima was also a Sarawada Buddhist chaplain at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver, Canada from year 2012 till 2016. Bante is currently the senior advisor to Patusota, a virtual Dharma organization that hosts a weekly online Pali reading class, Sutta discussion, Dharma talks, and a variety of other Dharma activities. His Dharma works can be accessed at www.patusota.blogspot.com or we can also follow Bante at Patusota Facebook account. Without further ado, we welcome once again Bante. Thank you very much for the wonderful guidance and teaching as always. Thank you, Ariana. Thank you very much for the introduction. Good evening, Dharma friends. Welcome back to the TRU discussion. Aliana, can we uh, send uh, Aaron a small note to add the title to the Facebook video? Otherwise, yeah, people might not know what we are discussing today. Okay, oh, maybe the Facebook, uh, what do you call The title I sent you? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Right. right. A new beginning to a new sutta. Right. Uh, we've been uh, discussing Patakama Sutta for many weeks and before that it was Nabi Sutta and then Dhammachakra Sutta and many suttas have been discussed so uh, let's uh, pay respect to the Buddha and then we will proceed Sadhu San Namo Tasse Bhagavatu Arehatu Sama Sambud Tasse Namo Tasse Bhagavatu Arehatu Sama Sambud Tasse Namo Tasse Bhagavatu Arehatu Sama Sambud we have today Aliana, Margaret, uh, Nige, and Melinda. Uh, uh, the Boo, Kim Neo, Kelvin, Kim, Chan, Isilim, Samitha. Aaron is uh, taking care of the technical side today. And Hema, Yo Ping, and Jacqueline. Maybe there are maybe others, probably, who might be joining as we continue. So uh, today, uh, the topic uh, for the Sutta discussion uh, is what we call uh, an introduction. A new Sutta, we call it uh, Patama Samajivi Sutta. The name of the Sutta is Patama Samajivi Sutta. Anguttara Nikaya uh, 4.55. 
Now, Angutra Nikaya and today's day 95. Angutra Nikaya categorizes Dhamma by number. Now, when you see the first number, that means uh, the Dhamma things that are discussed in that particular sutta has to be that number. Now, here, four. That means this sutta discusses only four things. If it is six, six things. Right? And if it is four, it is called Chatukra Nipata. That means a fourth section of the Anguttara Nikaya. Patama Samajivi Sutta. Patama Samajivi. Patama means one. Samajivi. Jivi means living. Sama means equal or probably uh, living with. So equal living. Now, there are, uh, I think, two suttas about Samajivi. So this is called Patama Samajivi Sutta. The first same living or equal living sutta. This is about a relationship and how does the Buddha look at the relationship. We, you may look at your relationship, other people's relationships in your own way, in their own ways. But this is how the Buddha looks at it. So I think it's important to understand. Some people always think that uh, the Buddha has a very, um, what do you call, anti-perspective about uh, the lay life and he did not really discuss about the lay life because m m most of the suttas that they listen from uh, many they are mostly given to monks including the Amachakapatan Sutta so when Buddha had taught a lot of Dhamma teachings for lay people ex exclusively given to the lay people and if they were not discussed if you haven't heard them even for a moment and you are always trying to put everything from the monastic way, I think things might not uh, really work uh, in your Dhamma chain. You might learn it, you might feel happy because it's Dhamma, but it might not work for you uh, in the long run. That's why I specifically chose these lay people's sutta, Buddha Kiel. So you learn them. You can discuss them. If somebody asks, hey, go, Anguttara Nikayas, this and that, all that, right? That's why we discuss, even we discuss uh, Singhala Vaga Sutta, right? So, so for lay people. And then uh, Mangala Sutta. The, all these suttas are for the lay people. So I encourage lay people to read lay people suttas first, in the first place, and then go to read other ones. Otherwise, you might, uh, you might, kind of uh, get stuck in your understanding. You hear something from here, something from there, but they were exclusively given to the monastics. So how do you understand? So basically it's better, you might hear time and time, here and there, but try to focus uh, in learning and understanding uh, these suttas because they are very importantly discussed uh, with your lay life. All right. Today I'm not going to... Uh, Get into the sutta's context, but I will just do an introduction about the sutta, the names of the people involved, and then uh, those kind of like a background, so you will know, understand what it is. Let's go and see the sutta over here. Okay. Now, uh, Samajivi, yeah? Samajivi. So GB means living and uh, summer means same. That means uh, not living together. People are rich, they might live together. But here, living the same way. How to live in the same way? That means if he does the same thing, I have to do the same thing. Is it? It is not what the Buddha uh, means over here. Same in living means or equal in living means working on four spiritual qualities. That is what the Buddha meant by same in living. First, identify the sutta's background. Evam me sutta. This phrase uh, keeps, keeps appearing in many suttas. What does it mean? Evam me sutta. 
Thus have, so have I heard. Eva means? So thus have I thus. heard. Me means by me. Sutang means? Sutang heard. means? Heard. Heard. I have, thus I have heard. Who, who has heard this? Ananda. An. Ananda. Bhante An. Good. Oh, as we understand, uh, Anguttara Nikaya, the particular set of books, have been maintained by Ananda. Bhante Anurutta and his disciples. Oh, yes. The, in the first uh, convocation, I would say Sangai, no? what happened was Diga Nikaya has been maintained and this, you know, uh, you know, uh, taken as a lineage by Bhante Ananda and his disciples. And Majjama Nikaya has been, um, uh, you know, maintained and then uh, preserved by uh, Arahan Sariputta and his disciples. But the Sariputta already passed away, but his disciples. And Anguttara Nikaya uh, was maintained and uh, preserved by Bhante Anurutta and his disciples. And then uh, Samyutta Nikaya, another section, Buddha doesn't know these names, huh? but they were later compilations names. Uh, Samyutta Nikaya was uh, maintained and preserved by Arhan Mahakashapa and his disciples. And Kuddhaka Nikaya was taken by everybody. There were different books came in and then, you know, even if you look at Kuddhaka Nikaya in Thailand and Burma and Sri Lanka, they are different. Sri Lanka is 15, Thailand different, Burma is different. That's why I'm telling that. We have to understand these books, these texts, what had happened to these books, right? Some they have added by senior monks later on. So, uh, Anguttara Nikaya and uh, Eva Mesutam, we believe that this may be Bhante Ananda. And then now, he is sharing the story. Eva Mesuda. Ekam Samaya. Ekam Samaya means, you could say once uh, on one occasion, once upon time. Bhagava. Bhagava means? Blessed one. Blessed one. I think we discussed uh, this Pali term, the Buddha's uh, Bhagava many times. Uh, Bhagava means someone who has cut off or eradicated raga or loba and dosa and moha. So the Buddha has uh, eradicated raga, dosa, moha completely. That's why he's called Bhagava. Bhagesu viharati susumara giri. Now, this can be pronounced in many ways. Susumara giri. Susumara giri. There are different variants actually. Besakala vani migada. Besakala Vani Migadai. Now Migadai, we understand it's a dear part. We know another Migadai. What is that Migadai? Migadai uh, Migadai at Isipatanara, right? Where the Buddha gave his first talk. But this is another dear part. This is called Migadai in the Besakala. It's a forest. Besakala Vani. And then we have to understand these two places. Bhaggesu, Sunsumara. Bhagga means, Bhagga is a country. It's not a, a main state like Magadavatsa, Gosalavati. It's adjacent to uh, some other main states. Uh, Bhagga is a certain, uh, you could say it's a county in the West. It's a country means a certain big area. And then the main city, probably the capital city, was called Sunsumaragiri. What is it called? Sunsumaragiri. See it here? Sunsumar. This <coughs> is another variant. Sunsumaragiri. No? Sunsumaragiri. Also, okay, yeah. So, 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 yeah. So, what does Susumara mean? Susumara means a crocodile. The Pali meaning of Susumara means it's not another Mara, right? Susumara means crocodile. It is said that when the city 
this place was uh, made, built. Then there was a, a crocodile uh, in a nearby lake made a uh, made a crying, made a made a noise. So they put the city's name as Sunsumara Gilgit, like the Australian city Badagini. Some Sri Lankan workers went to Australia and then one day they were working so hard, they were so hungry and they said, Badagini, Badagini, Badagini. They put Badagini as the city's name. <laughs> There's a uh, city in somewhere in uh, Australia, Badagini. Badagini is a singular name, Sri Lankan name. Hungry, starving, yeah, starving. In the same way, this crocodile made a sound. So they put the na name of the city which was being built, built as Sunsumara is the crocodile. Giri, you could say a mountain. Uh, at the same time, you could also see maybe a sound. But Sosumara Giri means uh, the capital city of Bagra County. At the same time, it's a cry of crocodile. Now, this Sosumara Giri is a very important place because the Buddha spent his eight vasa in this city. Not the first one, but eight. Eight. That means how old how old must have must, must have he have been actually? He could have been seven, thirty-seven. Huh? Eight was is eight years. Oh wait. Huh? Forty-three, forty-three. Uh, forty-three. So that means Buddha spent time uh, in this place at an at a, at an early time of his mission. Very early time. Uh, probably he was you know starting off his Dhamma journey. Eight was and then uh, there are other couple things uh, that are very important about Sunsumara Giri, the capital city of Bagra, because Buddha gave this sutta to a couple called Nakula Pita, Nakula Mata. Nakula uh, is a name. I we probably think this is a name of somebody. His father, his mother, Nakula's mother, Nakula's father. They were living in this Sunsumara Giri, Besakalava area, and then. And, in the bug account. There are other couple things that we have to learn before we go to the Nakula Mata, Nakula Pita couple. One thing is that uh, this is the same place, Sosu Margiri city is the same place where Mara went inside the tummy of Arhan Mahamoggal. Interesting. Mara could go inside the Arhan Moggalana's stomach, tummy. He was giving a very hard time. It's a practice. Sometimes, you know, like uh, in some cultures, they think if somebody gives a bad thing to you, <laughs> maybe some witchcraft, they're going to give something with the food and you eat it, something happening to you with your tummy. So Mara went inside Arhan Moggallana's tummy. He went, how powerful is he? He went inside. Then Arhan Moggallana saw that he's inside, having some pain in the tummy. And what happened? Then he said, I was also a Mara in a previous life. Arhan Moggallana was also a Mara in a previous life called Dusi Mara. I should share here. Dusi Mara. Okay. What was his name? Dusi Mara. Who was it? Arhan Moggallana. Arhan Moggallana told. This this Mara, main Mara, Masawati Mara, now you came inside my tummy, you gave me a hard time. It's very bad because entering uh, uh, Mara to enter a holy man's, holy man's tummy is so bad. You're creating bad karma. Then I did the same thing. I did the same thing into somebody in that life. Then because of that, I was reborn in a hell. Mahani Ray. And then Mara was very, very uh, displeased about hearing this. He left. So the same thing happened. The same thing happened in this Sunsumara city. There are many other stories uh, with this uh, Sunsumara including, you know, there was a very famous uh, young man called uh, uh, Prince Bodhi, uh, who who made a nice, uh, what do you call like a mansion and invited the Buddha to come to his place, uh, Kokanada uh, mansion. And uh, actually he was the governor of this city, uh, Susumara Giri. So Susumara Giri is the city uh, of this uh, uh, sutta's uh, 
reference. Pagka County, Sunsumara, Giri, City. And the base of Calabona is a uh, forest. All right, then we come down to this important section. Uh, probably we can ask somebody to read too, just to how other people. Would anybody like to uh, read this part? Mante, I try. Yes, yes, please. Thank you. At the co bagawa pubang hasan mayan niwa sitwa pata chiva pata chiva ramadaya yena yena nakula pitono gahap kahapatisa niwe sanam terupa san kami upasan kami tua. Panya, panya te, asane nisidi. Thank you. Good. Ate ko bhagava, uban samayan, nivasitwa, patta chivara madae, yena nakula pituno, gahapatis, nivesanang, te nupasanka, upasanka mitwa, panya te asane nisidi. Now, now, we have to understand the Buddha was living in the Sonsumaragiri uh, city in the forest called Besakalavan over here. And then now, uh, on that particular day in the morning, what, he, what happened was Pubbana Samyang in the morning time, uh, having, um, having uh, got dressed, he took his uh, patta means his arms bow and chivara means rope, uh, and then having... Uh, Taken his bow, arms bowl and rope, he what happened? He uh Upasankam, he went to the Nivesana house of Gahapatissa Napulapitu. Gahapatissa means householder Napulapitu. Napulapitu. That I mean that means we don't find any uh rentees at that time, huh? all are householders. Nobody was renting other people's houses at that time. Right? The householders, Gahapatino. <laughs> Everybody Owned a house. Rich people, huh? not like people are renting on other people. I mean, this is what we see. Gahapatis, not rentee's house. It's the house of somebody who owned house. Nakula pitu, Gahapatis, Nakula pitu. So now Buddha, having got dressed, having taken his arms bowl and uh, rope, he now went to this Nakula pitu, Nakula pitu, uh, also the Nakula pitu's house. Upasankamitva, having uh, completed house. Panyate means arrange, asana, arrange, uh, seat. So that means this this, this uh, trip was an arranged trip. The, the, the new Buddha would come. Otherwise, they would have not prepared him a seat. Arrange seat. All right. Now, we are not going to continue after this, I think. Let's see. Probably we can go, but... At the moment, I'm going to uh, just uh, making a pause at this point, just to discuss. This is a very normal uh, section where we see all the suttas. I want to talk about Nakula Mata, how the Nakula, Nakula Pita and Nakula Mata. This is a couple. By this time, this could be uh, a senior couple. So, uh, there are many suttas that go by Nakula Mata, Nakula Pita. Let me tell you. One is Anguttara Nikaya's this sutta. This means Anguttara Nikaya's, as you can see, uh, fourth section and 55. There are three other Nakula Pitu suttas. They were all given to uh, Nakula Pitu, the man of this house, and uh, his wife was also uh, involved in these suttas for different purposes. Before we jump on to today's one, I will share with you a couple of things and then also discuss some of the other main suttas that the Buddha talked to uh, this couple. Before that, let's identify this couple. Who are Nakula Mata, Nakula Pita? It is said that they are Shakyamuni Buddha's parents for 500 lifetimes. Interesting, yeah? This couple 
was the parent to was pay, was the parent to uh, Shakyamuni Buddha for five hundred lifetimes. That means they have a really uh, you know uh, strong bondage to the Buddha, and they are sotapannas. They are sotapannas. Means they have attained the first uh, uh, stage of uh, enlightenment or awakening, and they have been. Parents to the Buddha for 500 lifetimes. 500 lifetimes. Interesting, no? Some of the very longest uh, bondages have gone back to 500 lifetimes. Tell me one other, that kind of a uh, bondage the Shakyamuni Buddha had like this. 500 lifetimes. Can you remember? Now, this bondage as parents have uh, gone back to uh, 500 lifetimes. Tell me another that kind of a bondage the Buddha had uh, to other people. Until he said his wife. Huh? Ah, yeah, wife. So there are. Yeah. Uh, their stories, uh, they first fell in love with each other 500 lifetimes back. 500 lifetimes back. Uh, we'll be discussing that too. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that, yes, I mean, Napula Mata, Napula Pita. And Buddha gave them a designation. In another sutta, what was the designation he gave to this couple? Was they are the most intimate compa companions among his disciples. They call it Vissa, Vissasika. The most Vissasika. Vissasika means Vissasika. Vissasika. The most intimate. Companions among his uh, savakas. So you could say lay people, huh? not among them. With Sasi, the most intimate companions among his lay people. That means a Buddha uh, placed a lot of trust in this couple. But he had no problem because they were his parents huh? for the final lifetimes. It means he did, it doesn't mean that he does, he didn't trust other people, but, like, like, uh, but he placed some trust because they were his parents for 500 lifetimes. Because on the other hand, there were many other directors, Ugg, uh, Sudat, uh, Indic, uh, there are many other people, but uh, this couple was special to him. And they were so tamas. Right. Now, uh, going back to uh, some other bondages, like what we discussed for 500 lifetimes, one uh, such bondage was uh, Yashodara, Buddha's uh, lay, uh, life uh, wife, Vesidata's wife. How, how did it happen? Now, we know this couple was the parents to the Buddha. How did that happen? In order for us to understand how did Yashodara make Siddhartha, Princess Yashoda, I mean Siddhartha, we have to go to the particular incident when Buddha met them in the palace. You know, after many years, uh, he came back to uh, his hometown, right? Kapilavattu. And then what happened? His uh, fellow people did not pay respect to him. They were telling him that you are such a small guy, why do we have to respect you? Right? You don't have experiences, right? We have this idea, right? Sometimes, you know, when you go see a young doctor, you might think, ah, this doctor might not treat us well. Huh? Surgery might go wrong. We have a very a biased mentality. We'd like to go for a senior doctor, even for a surgery, even to get some medications. It may be, maybe not, right? Anyways, the, the fellow people did not believe him. So Buddha had to then uh, make a miracle, right? He made the Yamaka Maha, Yamaka Maha Patihar. That means from uh, one part of his, uh, you know, body, he was emanating, spreading uh, a drop of water. The other part, fire. emanating fire. So people were like scared. What is this? This person should be somebody who is very exceptional. So he had to do that. Now, sometimes uh, in, in your life also, you might feel there are people who don't listen to you. Huh? 
Mm -hmm. You feel you have to do some miracles to them uh, just to get them convinced. Uh. But those <laughs> miracles don't work. They are they are getting more worse, you know. Finally, mm -hmm. sometimes you have to do some miracles which people might not understand. Even Arahant Sariputta's mother. What happened to her? Rupasari. Her name is Rupasari. It's a Brahmin. Rupasari. Yeah, Rupasari. Rupasari is the name of uh, Bhante uh, or Arahan Sariputta's mother. Oh. So she never had any respect for the son. So Arahan Sariputta thought, like I've been giving Dharma talks and everything to many other people. They are getting benefited, but my mother has not been able to understand Dharma. So he's a Hindu follower. So then he told the Buddha, I would uh, pass away in my mother's house. So he took the permission. He went to the house. So the day before he was going to pass away, there were many people who came to see him off. Mahabrahma. <laughs> Mahabrahma. Mahabrahma is the higher god in Hinduism. And, and mother had only seen uh, texts uh, from different things. And she saw. And Arhan Sariputta made uh, those individuals, uh, you know, visible to mother. And then only mother understood now, even the, the higher God, even the teacher of my religion comes to pay respect to my son. Then my son must be higher than these people. So then, then she changed her mind. So you have to do some miracles to change some people. Even if Arahans did that, so Buddhas did that. What about us? But uh, if you don't have any uh, ability to do miracles, don't try to make miracles. Huh? And you might get ended up as a magician. Huh? I mean, but uh, we have to understand not everybody is listening to us. They don't need to. They don't have to. So when you are going to uh, tell something to somebody, you have to understand that there are people who might not easily get convinced. Right? Have you seen some people who never gives a good do good feedback to anybody? Pretty hard to get a good feedback from that person. Always complain. Right? Always. Even go for a restaurant, even to have a chat, even to have a tea, coffee, go somewhere, study something. They end up with a whatever a, a complaint. We can, if you want to complain, we can keep complaining the whole night. But we are trying to see something good out of anybody. Okay. But anyways, I'm trying to say that uh, Arham Sariputta had to do that for, uh, for his mother. Now, in the same way, Buddha had to come back to see his uh, parents, especially uh, and then the, uh, the family members. He came back, but Yashodara did not turn up. Uh, in that gathering, right? Then the after the Dhamma talk, Buddha went to her chamber, and she started crying. Buddha didn't say anything. And then what happened was that uh, he was she was trying to explain how things went. Ever since uh, I heard that you were you shaved your hair, I also started sharing, shaving my hair. Ever since I uh, heard that uh, you wearing yellow, what kind of robes, I started changing my clothes uh, to those uh, clothings. Ever since I heard that you eating only uh, one meal a day, I also changed myself to that. And a uh, lot of things. Whatever uh, she got to hear from other people, she followed the same thing. So I've been really loving you. Even the day you left, even you left me. And the Buddha said, I know. You haven't been like this, not in, even in this life. The first time we were uh, together, 500 lifetime backs, you were like this. So I have no, I have no concern about it. I know who you are. And then she, he started giving that life as a Jataka story. Now today I'm going to share the Jataka story called Chanda Kinnara Jataka story. It's saying, 
छंद छंद किन्नर जाते का स्टोरी वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग जाते का स्टोरी आई कैन टेल यू द नंबर इफ यू वांट टू योर ऑन सर्च लेटर इट्स गोइंग टू बी थिंक ओके 485 485 दे से दे आर 500 ओवर जाते का स्टोरी सो दिस इज 485 नाउ what what is happening in this jataka story verse once the bodhisattva born as a kinnara kinnara who is a kinnara the name is kinnara kin kinnara not kinrara okay you have a place like oh, kinrara is it kinrara <laughs> kinnara so kinnara means uh, this could be probably not the proper translation but we could say a mermaid but uh, but the way how you see a mermaid in english and now a kinnara could be different you can you could see a fish type uh, uh, you know uh, bottom part of this uh, mermaid but here in buddhist and hindu explanations kinnara is a person who has a human part in the upper body and a bird half bird uh, figure in the uh, lower part of the body half man half bird okay and then we have kinnari kinnari is the female version huh? kinnara is the male version this is uh, female kinnari kinnari is the uh, female version of kin kinnara now uh, in the himalayas the bodhisattva was born as a kinnara and yeah sure that i was born as kinnari and uh, they were having some time and then uh, one king went to this area and uh, he had a thought of uh, maybe uh, liking this kinnari and then he shot an arrow to this uh, bodhisattva he didn't know who is that and then uh, he got a very fatal wound because of that you know, a shot and then uh, the king was telling you i will give you more happiness than this guy and then don't worry about it and then uh, she was not really happy and she was trying to uh, request help and then it is said that uh, sakka the indra seat was uh, uh, felt he felt it and then uh, please come and help his life to be back and uh, sakka indra came and then uh, maybe he did a blessing or something and then this kinnara bodhisattva kinnara was able to uh, get back to normal it is said that the king who shot an arrow was bante anuruddha interesting yeah? arahan anuruddha's life as a king the one who uh, was taking care of the anguttara nikaya interesting and then uh, the bodhisattva was the kinnara and uh, the bodhisattva wife was yashodara so then the buddha said since this lifetime first uh, fell in love each other and then up to this lifetime 500 lifetime this lifetime i you chan kantaka host we were all born together interesting huh? we were co born right we were co born the host kantaka and channa and you and myself we were co born there are five i think there's another something someone who was born at the same time so five people were uh, born together so anyways uh, so he was appreciating yashodara's support uh, in order for him to become a better bodhisattva you know uh, there are different type of bodhisattva some bodhisattvas have more sadda some bodhisattvas have more um, panya uh, right so uh, there are different types of bodhisattvas and you have been really helpful for me to practice my dharma day so the question the the, the uh, importance of this story is going to work in two ways one thing is 500 lifetime sansaric relationship in terms of yashodara and prinsiddhanta for them on the other hand the 500 parental relationship 
between the Buddha and then his parents, right? On the other hand, and on the second, uh, secondly, uh, it's about uh, the the idea of this sutta. In this sutta, uh, this uh, Nakula Mata and Nakula Pita both are requesting the Buddha. Is it possible as a Buddhist as Sota Pannas? Whether we are able to be reborn together. Now, even a Sotapanna couple is trying to be reborn. Interesting, huh? <laughs> This kind of thing. Sotapanna couple is going to be reborn together. Asking the Buddha. Buddha never said it's anicca. But he said something very interesting. This is the uh, contents of the story. All right. So let's save those information. What the Buddha said, how they asked the question. Because today is just a background knowledge, introduction. Uh, I want to... Uh, discuss with you the other three suttas which Nakula Mata and Nakula Pita involve with the Buddha. They are pretty philosophical too, in a way. Now, the first one is leave about today's one because we are going to talk about that later a little bit and then the more uh, contents on other days. There is another sutta by the same name, Nakula Pita Sutta. Write it down. Sangyutta Nikaya 20, 22 one. This is also called Nakula Pita Sutta. Okay. Now, what happens in this Sutta? Once Nakula Pitu, this man, uh, gets very sick. He is very sick. So, what happened was that he went to see the Buddha. He told the Buddha, Bhante, I am very sick now. I think something is going wrong with me because I cannot practice sila. I cannot practice samadhi. I'm so worried about myself. Now, what if this happens to you? You're not a dumb, but suddenly you get sick very much because of the uh, lack of uh, moving. You know, you are not able to uh, do the same things which you've been doing before and you will feel very worried about your spiritual life. You could be. Same thing happened to uh, Nakula Pitu. Then let me probably share with you how the Buddha answered the question. Huh? Okay, this is how. Right? So he told the Buddha, uh, Pante, I'm so worried about my uh, physical inability, illness now, uh, but my mind is okay. But my physical body is very much affected. But I worry about my spiritual life. In case I happen to die, I don't know what will happen. To me. Then this is what the Buddha said. Hopefully I can share with you over here. Ah. Then the Buddha said to him, Aturo Haya Gahapati Haya Andabhutu Pariyonat Yohi Gahapati Imankaya Pariharantu Muhuttampi Arogya Patijaniya Kimanyatra Balya. Don't worry about all this Pali. I just want to show you that these are from authentic Pali Sutta. That's why I actually post it here. If anyone carrying around this body were to claim to be healthy, even for a moment, even for a moment that I'm healthy, what is that due to the other than foolishness? That means. Don't take it uh, in a literal way. You are supposed to say you are healthy. It's a, it's a, it's a good feeling, right? Now, what 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 does uh, I mean? Uh, somebody can somebody see when other people are claiming that they are healthy. It's happiness, right? I'm healthy. I'm I'm not that bad. But if somebody is too much conceited with the good health, then the Buddha said this is kind of something that uh, starts in that person's mind due to foolishness because nobody is healthy. According to Buddhism, even hunger is also an illness. Huh? Thirst is also an illness. Can we stay without eating the whole day? No. We can. But then we will compensate with other things. Huh? We will pick on other people. You see, when other, many people, when they are getting very upset uh, and then when they are getting very mad, uh, oftentimes they have skipped their meals. 
they haven't had their meals properly at the right time. But now the, uh, what you call pressure is going from another uh, way. That means taking meals at the right time is very necessary, very, very important. So that means we are, we might not have those serious uh, health problems, might not. But even hunger, thirst, they are also health issues. Right? Then, now the Buddha has to tell something to him. Then he said, this very important thing. This is what he said. This has to be very much understood uh, in a proper way. In the same sutta, he said, Tasma tihate gahapati evang sikitaba. Now, householder Nahula Pitu, you have to train like this, you have to think like this. Atura kaya sami satu chittang, anaturang bavisati. Ah, therefore, householder Nahula Pitu. You should train yourself this way. Even though I am afflicted in body, my body may be sick, your body may be sick, but your mind is unafflicted. So that is how you have to think about the worry that you had. Now, how do we understand this particular thing uh, in our uh, own way? Another simple way to understand this question by Nakulapi to the same man in the Sutta also, Matama Samajimi, is that he was worried about his sila and samadhi practices. Let me let me ask you a question. When you get very old, can you practice sila very easily? Not so. Very easily, yeah, compared to your young time, uh, middle age time. Not, not very easy. No, that is good. Uh, maybe you can't sit down, uh, right? Maybe you cannot uh, move around, right? Maybe you might forget, right? Physical inabilities, cognitive problems, uh, dysfunctions, right? There are many things that can affect. What about samadhi? Yeah, can you meditate when you get very old? Is it very easy for you to meditate? No. You have a lot of sanya, right? When you get old, you have a lot of sanya, you know, a lot of memories, right? As you age, your sanya, amount of your sanya is higher than a young person. Young person has not exposed to the world that much. He or she has, right? That's why you see, uh, you ask a child, hey, go take a shower. This child, just go and come back, you know, doesn't even stay in the shower for long. But when you're getting older, you will spend a lot of hours in the washroom, shower, thinking a lot about what's happening after this shower. <laughs> right? I mean, too many problems. Maybe this could be the place you are planning everything. Because your sanya is too much. You have a lot of sanya. What is sanya? Memories. Past mm -hmm. memories. Uh, then now, uh, how you look at those past memories now. And then how you plan those member, uh, sanya to the future sanya. A lot of sanya. That means when you sit down, it's, it's not that very easy. It's a difficult thing. But some might do it. But for the majority, it can be a challenging task. That means uh, samadhi can be a challenging task as you age. That's why the Buddha became the Buddha when he was 35 years old. Huh? Good age, <laughs> 35 years old, a good time. And uh, now, Nakula Pita's worry, Bante, I'm not, I'm sick in my body, but my mind is okay. But in order for you to practice Sila and Samadhi, you need a certain health in your body. But what about Panya? Panya means Samaditi, Samasankam. Panya. Panya means a wisdom, wisdom about your dhamma path, wisdom about your life. That thing might not be affected. Why? You already got that. You already understood throughout your dhamma journey about some wisdom. Now, what is getting more developed when you age? Is it your concentration or is it your discipline or is it your wisdom when you age? Tell me. What is getting more developed as you age? Wisdom. 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 Wisdom part is going high. Right? 
discipline, you will be automatically disciplined. <laughs> Little bit, and then <laughs> sorry, I'm not actually disrespecting the old days. You all going through this thing one day. I'm telling you what's happening. Uh, and then the uh, concentration part difficult. It's a little difficult because a lot of sannyas are going around in those kind of people's mind. Not, I mean, when you are living longer in this life, a lot of sannyas are there you to deal with. Then in order for you to find concentration, you have to work with those sannyas. Good sanya, bad sanya. Uh, we have a Pali word called sanya vipallas. Huh? It's a very uh, interesting Pali word. Sanya vipallas, which means distortion of, uh, what's the English word? Perception. Perception. That means when you live longer, what is happening to us is that our sanya can get distorted. How can that happen? Some folks. Now let's say you in your life you have had bad experiences with somebody. Let's say he or she was your friend. Now do you think that uh, this will be a one-time occasion that you are going to think about? Or you think that this can carry to your uh, further stages of your life? You had a bad experience with somebody in your 20s, 30s, 40s probably. Let's say you are now in your 70s or 60s or 80s. Okay? It is very easy for you to come up with that old sanya and then to make a decision based on your experiences. So I'm trying to tell you that Sila and Samadhi could be challenging to us as we age. That's why we have to do them earlier. Sila Samadhi must be done earlier. Don't wait. Don't wait till we get old. Otherwise, it will become very challenging to us. Now, Panya, the Buddha said, okay, Nakula Pita, don't worry. You said you are physically not okay. I understand. But don't worry. Your mental side, wisdom part, is with you. You have wisdom. Don't move. So it's a very interesting uh, thought to any person who is senior. Now, any senior might uh, ask a question from a monk or whoever. One day, my, uh, I cannot practice seal. I cannot practice uh, samadhi meditation. So I, I'm worrying about it. What about your panya? You know, you know some wisdom. You you should not do bad karma. You have to. Uh, Look at the noble eightfold path this way and that way. You have wisdom. So this is uh, the main teaching Buddha gave to this kind of a person in the text. Nakula Pitu Sutta, Sangita Nikaya, 22.1. Same Nakula Pitu. All right. Then the second Sutta is also Nakula Pitu Sutta. It, but it is in a different place. Huh? Write it over here. This is the second. Now, uh, first one is our topic today. Patama Samajeevi Sutta Anguttu Nikaya. But this one, Samyutta Nikaya 22, one is another Nakula Pita Sutta for the same person. Now, this is the third one. Huh? This is given in Samyutta Nikaya 35.131. Yeah. This is also a very interesting Sutta. A very interesting question has been discussed here. A lot of people ask this question different times. The question is, Bhante, why some people become arahants in this life? Why some cannot become arahants in this life? Two people ask this question. At the end of many Dhamma talks, they do. Here is the place Nakula Pita asked the question from the Buddha. Then Buddha said, this. Go and check it out. It's about... I'm going to just uh, post it over here. Pali. Santiko Gahapati Chakku Vinyaya Rupa Itta Kanta Mana Pape Rupa Tamupa Sangita Rajaniya Ancha Bikku Abhinandati Abhivadati Jusaya Tittati Asatan Abhinandato Abhivadato Ajusaya Tittato Tannisitan Vinyan Hoti Tadupadana Upadana It is because of grasping Upadana after the craving. When somebody has upadana, that person cannot 
ever attain Nibbana in this life? That is the answer. So I'm going to write it here. So next time when other people are asking, Bhante, can we be a Sotapanna in this life? <laughs> if you cannot become a Sotapanna, this is the problem. Right? Even if that. Okay. Additional information. Huh? So this uh, Sangyutta Nikaya 35, 1, 3, 1 Sutta, the same couple of pages Sutta is about uh, explanation given by the Buddha about why some people attain uh, Nibbana in this life, why some others cannot attain Nibbana in this life. Now, we are going to discuss the last Sutta. This is called, it is also Napula Pitta Sutta again. But it is given in the Anguttara Nikaya. So, all Anguttara Nikaya is 6.16. All right. Now, this sutta, Anakula Pitu Sutta, Anguttara Nikaya's one, is very interesting. Nakula Pitu suddenly very ill now, almost going to die. Now, Nakula Mata understands that he has some worries. Even a Sota Panna can have some worries. What kind of worries? If I die, what will happen to Nakula Mata? What will happen to my wealth? Right? There are some questions. Then Nakula Mata is telling him, Nakula Pita, don't die with some worries. In Buddhism, nobody is supposed to die with worries or fears. Right? What if, if the death itself is an issue to many people right? before they die? It's going to be a big problem. right? Now we are talking here uh, don't die with fears about other things before you die. Right? What if that there is a person who is feared, scared of death itself? What do you think about that person's next life? That can be a problem. So in this particular sutta, Anguttara Nikaya 6.16, Nakula Pitu Sutta, uh, Nakula Mata, his wife, understands that husband is having some some worries about uh, his death, especially what will happen to uh, us, my children, and to me. Uh, mm -hmm. Then he's worried about that, even as a sota. That's a bit interesting uh, topic, actually. We will talk one interesting thing. Huh? Okay. Okay, this is how. Uh, she uh, a translation of uh, Nakula Mata's answers. Huh? Let's see. Householder Nakula Pitu, don't pass away with concerns. Don't die with concerns. Such concern is subtle and it's criticized by the Buddha. Nakula Pitu, householder, you might think, ah, these are the worries that Nakula Pitu had. So we hear those worries from the side of uh, Nakula Mata. When I have gone, means when you've gone, the housewife Nakula's mother, that means his wife, won't be able to provide for the children and keep up the household carpets. Is this a normal worry yeah. uh, a wife may have, whether the man might have? Yes. When you die, you might think that I won't be able to take care of them. Then he, she says, but you should not see it like this. I am skilled at spinning cotton and Cutting food. I am able to provide for the children and keep up the household carpets. So, mm. householder, don't pass away with concerns. She's a strong lady. Yeah? Even can uh, uh, solaces her husband. Not even that. Householder, you might think when I have gone, when you gone, the housewife Nakula's mother will take another man, husband. But you should not see it like this. Both you and I know that we have remained celibate while at home for the past 16 years. Actually, this is uh, 16, uh, probably in that life. Some translations give that maybe they are early 16 years. Because uh, at that time in India, mm. it is said that 
everyone has to uh, spend four stages of life. What are they? A Brahmachari. Brahmachari means for the first some years, 16 years, you have to be celibate. Even lay people. Then, another many years, you are going to have a married life. Gruhastha. Then, Vana Prastha. After some years, you are going to the forest for your tapasa practices. Then you become a tapasa, sannyasi. So, what uh, Nakula Mata is saying here is that don't worry, I don't need other men. You and I, we've been celibate for many years, even in our first 16 years. I can take care of myself. Don't worry, don't die with uh, worries. Now, this sutta is a very interesting sutta, how a wife is solacing a dying husband. And then how to, uh, you know, overcome fears in the deathbed. But you know, fortunately, what happened? He didn't die. He did not die. Because after hearing how the wife is going to handle everything, he said, now I'm not. he did not die. He was very happy. So he went to see the Buddha and told the whole story to the Buddha. Right? Because he was more worried, what will happen if I die, uh, you know, without any support for this you know, my uh, wife and my children. So this is the other uh, last sutta which goes by Nakula Pitu, Angutra Nikai, six points. Is, actually, I'm going to give a Dhamma talk uh, on this particular sutta in my upcoming trip in a Buddhist center. So I'm going to keep in some information. Uh, what you call overcoming uh, fears uh, for the death. Especially now here, Nakula Mata is supporting to clarify, uh, dispel these insecurities uh, her husband had. All right, let's go back now to our main sutta. Now you know who is Nakula Mata and Nakula Pita. They are the mm. sutta partner couple and they were uh, parents of the Buddha, Shakyamuni Buddha for 500 lifetimes. They were the most intimate companions to the Buddha, his um, Sikha uh, disciples. And uh, the, this is not only the first sutta, that Buddha gave uh, to this couple. There were another three main suttas. One sutta was given in terms of uh, what you call physical sickness and mental uh, sickness. And Buddha said, if you have panya, it's okay. You, have, you don't have to worry before you die. And the second sutta, Buddha says that uh, why people don't attain Nibbana in this life, why other people attain Nibbana in this life. The last sutta, is an explanation about uh, how to overcome fears, insecurities before somebody passes. Now let's go back to uh, our main topic again. We have to do one more section to discuss things. But before that, let me ask you, if you have any questions about these other suttas, about this couple, Any questions about uh, these other suttas? I mean, same name, but there are different suttas by the same name for the same couple. Does anyone know the meaning of Nakula? Does anyone know the meaning of Pali word Nakula? N A K U L A Nakul <laughs> might be another Kula Nakul. For those who are attending my Pali class, uh, I think they don't have any excuse. Huh? You learned it yesterday. Mongoose, mongoose, mante. Mongoose, mongoose, mongoose is an animal. It said that there is an eternal hatred between. Cobras and mongoose. Ahi Nakula, call it. Call it uh, Ahi means cobra. Actually, we say this to be Ahi Nakula. Ahi means in, in Pali means cobra. And uh, Nakula means mongoose. So does that mean uh, Nakula Mata is the mother of uh, mongoose? 
<laughs> Isip, kung nakulapit tayo sa father of a mongoose, perhaps this could be a lineage, a tribe, a tribe at that time. You know, the name of, name goes by uh, the animal. All right, Nakula. All right, any questions about other suttas before we jump on to our uh, exact specific one? One thing, there's a question uh, on the Facebook. Mm -hmm. There's a brother Hector is asking about uh, is the body tree also born the same day as uh, uh, when the Buddha born? Body tree? That's a very good question. I cannot say anything about it now. But, anyways, there are five things, five people. Both things they born at the same time, co bones. Uh, yeah, we call it uh, five co bone uh, with the Buddha actually. You can find it out. So, yeah, anyway, so definitely, uh, Prince Siddhartha, Princess Yashodara, Post Kantaka, Charioteer Chan, maybe another person or something, maybe both of you. We have to find it out. Yes, we will find it out. I think if you are in our WhatsApp group, I will uh, leave a message about it. How to verify it. You know what? Brother, I'm not sure whether he's in our WhatsApp group. I mean, uh, probably I we, can, we can reply to the Facebook comment huh, later. Any other questions about uh, these other suttas? Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Okay, yes, this is what is uh, what you talked about just now can post in the WhatsApp, the Pali and the English translation. Do you want me to post under the group? Uh, no? I mean, the you you posted the Pali and English translation in the chat group, mm. yeah, can post it in the WhatsApp also, yeah, I can. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to actually uh, bother you with a lot of Pali because some might not be, feel comfortable. No, but, but I'm very interested in Pali. Ah, okay. Because yeah. I want to show you that these are Buddhas, but not my own yeah. things. That's why I actually posted. You can you can see the references. Thank you, Bante. Yeah, yes, uh, Aliana, your question. Bante, I've heard about a couple who have uh, one rope only, uh, ah. who are yeah, sharing the rope. When the husband went to listen to Sita, yeah. uh, but Buddha stopped, and then the uh, wife would stay at home. Is it the yeah. same couple as this? No, no, no. That's called Ekasartaka, Ekasartaka Brahmin and the wife. Um, okay, Ekasartaka Brahmin and the wife, they had only one, uh, what do you call it? It's a shawl, uh, shawl. At that time, they used to have a shawl just to respect. I think this is the shawl that they, they don't, when they bow down, they spread it over and then they bow down. So uh, that is how they bow down. They just don't bow down on the floor. Maybe the floor might be dirty. Uh, so uh, because of this one shawl, they could not go to the Vihara, listen to Dharma talks uh, uh, every day. So they had to take turns. Mm -hmm. right? But one day, at the end of a Dhamma talk, overnight Dhamma talk, the Brahmin was the one who went to the Vihara. He was overjoyed. So now he thought he was, he, he was, I think he was saying something, I won, I won, I won. Like wow. then other people, especially the king of King Kosal, I think, he was in the audience, uh, in the disguise form, like a normal person. Other people could not uh, recognize him. He saw one man was uh, screaming. Uh, that I won, I won what you want, the Dhamma told. You won, you won. Like the Eureka, right? So, anyways, and then he what he meant by he won means he came to a point that he wanted to offer that shawl to the Buddha. So then he went and he offered it to the Buddha. Actually, sometimes when uh, when you when we look at our dana or dana dana thought. We we can we can give up things we don't want. I mean, compared to somebody who is not giving them, it's a big thing. But normally, if you look at donors, dana people, the majority of them are giving up things that they don't need, that, that they don't worry about. 
it's it's okay because they are balancing out their finances. But I think it would be very difficult for somebody to give something when they only have the same thing, one thing. So I think that's a very difficult feeling. So when somebody did that, if it is suitable, then uh, the Brahmin came to a point that I won my loba thought. I mean, it's not a loba thought. He had to take turns with wife. But even thinking that this is our family show was a kind of a thought. That he thought kind of a loba thought, minor loba thought. Right? So, now say for instance, your, your house has only one particular thing. Everybody's using that thing, maybe one big, probably electronic equipment or something. What if that somebody is going to give it to somebody, thinking that uh, that I'm going to dispel my loba, that minor loba? Anyways, uh, he gave it to the Buddha. I felt like he won the thought of loba. Actually, we are we are always defeated by the husala thoughts. You look at yourself. Uh, uh, what is happening at the end of any uh, overindulgence means that we are. Uh, you know, uh, getting defeated by the Akusala thorns. But what if somebody thinks, I'm going to give a challenge to my Akusala thorns today, maybe one day, maybe today, maybe every day. I want to eat some food today, maybe some sweets, some sugar stuff. That's a very good challenge. Huh? No harm challenge. <laughs> you wake up in the morning, you think, ah, today I'm going to be sugarless. I'm going to be sugarless. So, but when you see outside, when you, I mean, when you see the house, you see a lot of snacks, a lot of stuff, uh, many in many places. And then you are, many people, they are blaming, hey, who, who uh, left these things on the table? And now I'm going to eat all that, right? Blaming other people. Because you left that on the table, I, I have to eat now. But <laughs> this particular day, you are not blaming anybody. It's my problem. So your problem. When you left a lot of sugar stuff, anything. I'm thinking I'm going to be sugarless today. Let's see, I'm going to win the thought of Loba today, whether I can or not. And you're trying, you are challenging. Maybe you may be able to win that thought by the end of the day. Right? Not like that marshmallow theory. Huh? You see the marshmallow theory, giving a one marshmallow to one child. Don't eat that. If you eat it, I won't give you the next marshmallow. So the, the, the child is waiting for the next marshmallow to eat the both marshmallow. <laughs> Not that kind of waiting. This waiting is something that you are taking a challenge. And today, I'm not going to be defeated by my uh, low bath note in terms of eating unnecessary sugar. Right? So I think that is what happened with the Chulla, uh, chulla Eka Santa, Brahmi and with the Brahmin wife. Uh, two couples actually. Thank you, Bhante. Yes. Uh, all right. So I think we can go to the text again, the last section. Okay, this one. Now, this is also a very fame, very famous, popular section. Maybe we can ask somebody to read. Who, who would like to read this part? I'll try, Bhante. Yes. Uh, Slim, please. Atta ko takula pita cha kahapati takula bata cha Kaha patani, ena bagawa, te nupasang kaming, kaming soup. Upasang kamitwa, bawa wantang, abiwa, de, de toa, eka mangtang, nisi dim su. Eka mangtang, nisi no ko, nakula pita, kaha pati, bagawa wantang, e tada voucher. Great. Atta ko nakula pita chagahapati nakula mata chagahap gahapatani. Gahapati means household. Eh? Gahapatani means gahapatani House. means housewife. House housewife household. Household household because husband and household. It's not house husband and housewife. This is this is an owner of a house. That house. means this house. This house must have been bought by these two people. They are co-owners of the house. Not the house is only bought by the husband. Isn't it? It's a good idea. Gahapati, gahapatan. House was owned by the both. 
right? So not the housewife or house husband. That's a different kind of uh, mentality. Understand? So now, now we understand Buddha went to their house. What happens? Atako nakula pita chagahapati, nakula mata chagahapati ni. Then after that, when the Buddha already uh, took his seat, on that arranged seat. Yena Bhagavati Nupasang coming su plural. So they approach uh, the Buddha where he's where he sat. Upasang coming to having approach Bhagavantang Abhivaditva. Abhivaditva respected, having respected the Buddha. Ekamantang Nisiding Su plural. That means they sat to one side. Normally when you uh, uh, sit down in front of a respectable person, you don't sit pretty straight to that person. Huh? You don't sit on the right side, left side. You sit to a side. Side to respect. This is the, uh, the respectful manner how we see in the text. Then, ekamantang nisin no ko nakula pita Nakulapita, household of Nakulapita, having sat on the side, Bhagavantang, Etang Avocha. D is a combination. Etang Avocha. D has been substituted here. Said this. Uh, this part we will discuss uh, next week. Huh? But said this is a very uh, popular uh, phrase uh, which we see in many uh, suttas. It's still the same background narration given by other monks. Okay. All right. Uh, so the importance of the sutta, to tell you a little bit, is that uh, as a sotapanna couple, the both are asking the Buddha, Bhante, is it possible? No, they say, we would like to be reborn together. Reborn together. As so happened. Is it possible? If it is possible, what can we do to make it happen? This is the question that will be asked by, the, by them. Now, uh, answers, Buddha gave an answer. But before we question about the answers, uh, the interesting thing is that when many people study Buddhism, they do not understand this kind of version in their lay life. They think, uh, it's about uh, loba, pretty much loba. This is not about loba. They are sotapannas. What do we know about sotapannas? How uh, many life, lifetimes can a sotapanna be reborn? Seven, 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 seven times. Seven. Uh, it is said that uh, they will be reborn for seven uh, lives, maximum. Where, where do we find that statement? Where do we where do we learn that the the sota partners will never be reborn more than seven lifetimes forward? Oh, Ratana Sutta, I think. Ratana Sutta, Ratana Sutta. I think you are chanting every day, huh? probably. <laughs> probably, probably. How uh, how does Ratana Sutta mention that? Now. You have to remember, we have to memorize that. Where is that place in the Ratana Sutta? Not that Yani the Bhutan Samagata. Keep saying that, <laughs> keep chanting. Where is that place? Because we studied that before. Huh? Remember, a long time ago we studied, probably last year, early last last year. Nati Bhavang Atamang Adiyan. They do not take eight lives. That means, so when you become a Sotama, your maximum uh, future lives will be eight, seven. There will be no eight. Now, the commentary explains more about this, this seven, number seven. There are three types of sotapanas in terms of how they make the rest, how they make the make the next, uh, what do you call, uh, make the move to the next, become an arahant. Now, what, it, what does it mean by seven lives? That means... When you are a Sotapanna, you have yet to go for becoming an Arahant. Now, that journey is not similar to every Sotapanna. Some Sotapannas take it uh, in this life itself. Some Sotapannas take a couple more lifetimes. Some Sotapannas take 
seven more lifetimes. So we call it, the first one is called Eka BG. Eka BG. Three types of, three types of uh, Sota Pannas in terms of attaining Nibbana. That is how we had to understand. Not that three, three Sota Pannas. Sota Panna is one. <laughs> but there you see three types of Sota Pannas in terms of attaining their own uh, liberation. Mm -hmm. The first one is called Eka BG. Second one is Kola. Kola. Third one is called Satta. This is the one who takes the, the risk seven more lifetimes. Now, I'm going to connect this these three types of Sota Pandas in terms of it. Now, this couple is taking a risk. Is it a risk? It might not be a risk. This is what they want. They are Sota Pandas. They say, Bhante, we would like to be reborn together. That means they are taking another life. But do they have to worry about their sansaric life? Oh. That means do the same wish only if you are a Sota. <laughs> That's another point of it. <laughs> if you want to be reborn together with your with your partner, first become a Sota. So it's okay. <laughs> no worries. Right? Because you know, if you take one more life, no problem. Because you know that definitely within seven more lifetimes, you are going to be an Arahant. But if you haven't done that part, you simply want to be reborn as a soulmate, might be a risk. There might be a risk. Never know where you might be going. I mean, people have choices. We don't want to actually uh, say that you have to do the choice this way. But a better way is that because these are already so tough ones, it's not a, uh, it's not a risk for them. Because they have already finished their, entered the liberation. But still they want to be reborn together. That's interesting. That part is very interesting. I think they want to improve more, more of their spiritual activities. I think they are, for Nakula Mata, for Nakula Mata, Nakula Pita is the greatest Kalyana myth. Maybe for Nakula Pita, Nakula Mata will be the most Kalyana. Otherwise, you have to... Uh, I think it's a big problem, right? When you were born and when you don't have a lot of good friends, finding a Kalyana myth is very challenging, isn't it? But the person you are with is going to be a Kalyana myth. Very easy to do the rest. Right? Otherwise, you have to keep the connection with that person all the time. So I think they are very lucky. Both Kalyana myths to each other, they're both Sota partners, and they're going to make the the next slide. All right, I think we have a few more minutes, but uh, now uh, what I can say is that this Patana Samajivi Sutta is a clear indication that a, a relationship can go to the next life if you work on four things. Please keep in mind, just because you are Sota partners, also you cannot be reborn together. There are four things you have to practice. You should be studying after. But uh, the Buddha never said, Buddha could have said this way. Huh? You know, Nakula Mata, Nakula Pita, you already saw Tapanas, but why you take more lives to attain Nibbana, right? Why don't you focus on meditation and attain Nibbana? You know, never said that. These are people's choices. They have entered. He never said that. But if that uh, a couple is to ask from a uh, Dhamma person in today's world, this question, we want to be reborn together. How to do that in Buddhism? <laughs> they might be probably severely uh, criticized. Hey, you have to stop your craving. You, know, you can't do that. Because they may have not seen these suttas. They may have only seen certain high-end high -end suttas like Dhamma Chaka Pavla Sutta, Sabha Sutta, Sutta, those very high-end suttas. So that's why I'm uh, uh, teaching you, look at these suttas, understand your lay life, uh, and then uh, look at how Buddha thought about lay life, and then to build up your spiritual practice.
All right, any questions about uh, today, the introduction to the sutta with other information? Bhante. Yes. Uh, the, the, in this sutta, was it stated that it is better or easier to become a sotapan if the husband and wife both become sotapan together? Or is it easier or better if they become sotapan one by one? The sutta does not say uh, how they attain sotapan. They were already oh. Sota partners when they come to this store. Oh. But I would tell you something. They have been together for, I think, almost 40 years. Uh, very interestingly. So they were together. They were in a married life. And they were Sota partners. Right? There is a very interesting thing that I want to tell you before we finish. Uh, in one sutta, I think, okay. The, remember the first Nakulapita sutta? Sangita Nikaya 22.1. In this sutta, Buddha, I told you, Buddha told him, don't worry, because you have panya, your mind is good. So even if you die, you should be okay. Then uh, Nakula uh, Pita said to the Buddha, Bhante, can I ask the rest of the sutta from Arahan Sariputta? Then he approached Arahan Sariputta. Then after that, uh, he asked Bhante Sariputta, Bhante, what is the train in the mind? Now it's a big question. Huh? They always worried about it. Bhante, how to train my thoughts? Somebody might say, hey, you have loba, dosa, moha, overcoming. Bhante Sariputta said something very interesting. He said, cut down the Sakai Ritti uh, in regard to your five aggregates. 20 Sakai Ritti. Now we understand by that time, Nakula Pita had not become a Sota. Because if you, if you were a Sota Pan, your Sakai Ditti should be gone. So the uh, mental training, what do you call it? Training the mind means overcoming, overcoming the Sakai Ditti, or especially overcoming the uh, what you call personal identity towards the five aggregates. This is the mental frame, nothing else. Now, when Vishaka attains Sota Panahu, when Nakula Mata Nakula Pita attains Sota Panahu, but they still le led a normal life. It did not bother them. That means even spending a normal lay life, you can become a Sota Panahu. Not even you can become, you can spend life as Sota Panahu. That means there may be many Sota partners among the lady. Maybe they never know the way how they spend their life. You don't have to necessarily become a monk or nun. Just because you change the ropes, change the clothes, you will be never be attaining a certain <laughs> attainment unless you know the particular method to train your thoughts. Right? It's not the matter of changing your dress. It is the matter of your changing the way how do you look at yourself? How do you look at yourself is Sakkai. If you don't know how to look at yourself properly, that is Sakkai. If you know how to look at yourself, that means how to look at your five aggregates, that means you will be a Sotapan. Or probably. All right. Any questions? Thank you, Vande. So they were not, uh, it is not mentioned how they became Sotapan. Yeah. They must have attained Sotapan a long time ago. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Any other questions now, books? Have you ever heard in the in a, in a different Dhamma text, maybe a Dhamma talk, that Sota partners are trying to be reborn together as a couple? <laughs> interesting. Very interesting. Right? Here's the proof. Patama Samaji Visal. All right, looks like no question, isn't it? Hmm. Okay, if you have no questions, then we will uh, pass for the good karmas. Huh? Okay. May all the good karmas that we've been making today be transferred to all the departed ones who passed away in the name of all of us. May they be well and happy. May they attain the supreme bliss of Sadhu.
So share all this good kindness. May they be well and happy. May they protect and bless all of us for good health, for the good of life, prosperity, and safety. May they also bless us for our Dharma journeys. May they also finally attain the supreme bliss of Nibba. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Ittavata cha amehi sambhatam punya sangkadam sambhi deva anmukdan put sambhasang patti siddhya ittavata cha amehi sambhatam punya sangkadam sambhi bhuta anmukdan put sambhasang patti siddhya Ittavata cha amehi sambhatam punya sangkadam sabi satta anumodan ko sabha sampatti siddhiya akasadha cha bhumadha deva naga mahindika punyantham anumoditva chiran rakhang kulu prasasana akasadha cha bhumadha deva naga mahindika punyantham anumoditva chiran rakhang tudesana akasadha cha bhumadha Deva Naga Mahidika Punyatan Anumo Ditwa Chirang Rakhan Kumang Paranti Chirang Rakhan Kutwang Sada At the same time, we are making our wish, spiritual wish. May we be in the company of Kalyani until we attain Nibbana. Imina Punya Kamene Mami Bala Samagamun Satang Samagamun Finally, may all the good karmas which we're making today, by understanding the background of uh, introduction of Nakula, uh, Mata Nakula Pita, in terms of Patama Samajivi Sutta and other Nakula Pita Sutta so scattered in Sangita Nikaya and Nikaya, we support you and helpful for all of us to attain supreme bliss of Nibba. Sadhu, Sadhu, Abhivadana Siris, Nichan Vadha Pacha Inu, Chattaru Dhamma Vadhanti, Ayuvanu Sukhang Balan, Ayuraru Dhya Sampatti, Sagha Sampatti Mevich, Atu Nibbana Sampatti, Iminati Samitnu Shatu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Thank you, everybody. Wishing you a good night. Good night. Yes, thank you, Ali. Thank, thank you, Mante. Thank you, everyone. Good night. 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 Good night.